Hi, this is Scott Trout, CEO of the domestic litigation firm Cordell & Cordell. There are many life changes that can happen after divorce that make it difficult or impossible to uphold requirements of your divorce decree. The orders issued in a divorce are based on the facts presented at that time, but the circumstances used in issuing those orders can obviously change. If you feel a modification to your court orders might be necessary, Talk to us at Cordell and Cordell. Contact CordellCordell.com, 1065 East Hillsdale Boulevard, Suite 310, Foster City, California, 94404. Only I'll swear. But in the heat of the moment. Yeah. You're listening to Nearly Informed. What's going on, everybody? Nearly Informed. I'm Brian Moot. In with me today, comedians Dan Bolger and John O'Zelay. I guess I'd say, I, I mean, I, John, you're living in L.A. now, right? Yeah, Angelino. And uh, from San Diego originally, we're going to talk about the sad state of San Diego and Los Angeles uh, sports. Uh, We've also got, uh, Dan, are you living in Boston still? I live in Boston. Dan's in Boston Better forever. Better terrain and hell, I say. <laughs> well, so that'll be a good, um, we'll have a good way to bounce it off you because I, I think we're living the exact opposite e- existence in terms of sports right now. Where can people find you on social media well, before we get started and all this stuff? I'm at John Ozele, J-O-N-O, like Bono, but with a J and no tinted sunglasses. All right. There we go. He's got a joke worked out for his Twitter handle and everything. <laughs> Don't even look me up. <laughs> Just look, message John O. <laughs> yeah, his yeah. man crush Monday will be Dan Bolger. <laughs> He'll get it to me. <laughs> Most of my web presence exists through James Patterson or John O. That is, you Dan are- forgets his uh, Twitter login information, so he has to t- text me to tweet something for him. <laughs> Dan is like the most... Uh, I don't know how to say like like recluse like comedian I've ever met in my life when it comes to just how you always your existence has always been a mystery. He's an icon- huh. iconoclast. See, he if he found a way to say it nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's just because we don't really know what the hell any of that means. Yeah, yeah. At least I yeah, don't. Yeah. I don't know what it means, but I know <laughs> recluse is an insult. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's. I mean, it, are you still living? Do you still have the basement joint in Southie? Yeah, yeah. The basement place? Yeah. Yep. Is it, are you by yourself there? I worry about you if you live by yourself. I don't... I'm going to die there. <laughs> I mean, you've nearly burned down your house. <laughs> once. That at, was once. At least once. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, how many people... <laughs> but I slip in the shower twice a week, so... <laughs> well, I remember, we, John, were you living there when there was, like, so, wasn't there like a poisonous mold situation for a little bit? I think that might have been right after I left. That which does not kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Deficiency, uh, neural deficiencies once the mold spores eat your brain. Is that what it does? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> it means, uh, well, if you didn't have mold I- spores in your brain, you'd know. It means you're an iconoclast. I'll yeah. get mold in my brain? Oh, yeah. What about, like, my elbow? Would anything else show up first? I mean, sure, I mean, it's got to have some effect on your skin. I mean, it can't be good. No. No. Because I worry my skin's been blotchy. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> we'll get you to a doctor after the show. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I met, we all lived in Boston at the same time. Are, are all the same, is anything- You were in BC. I was going to Boston College, yeah. Is anything, because uh, there are some legendary crazy people in Boston comedy. Just legend, legendary. Mm-hmm. Like Ira Proctor. Is Ira Proctor, if he, is he still doing stand-up comedy in Boston? Or is he? Or is he now just like? Is he just gonna pop up somewhere? Because that guy is like every time I think I'm I'm not gonna see him again, I just somehow run across. I, him. I think Ira could come back like a like a like Thor. Or I something. mean, he is pretty jacked. He's, <laughs> he's been incredible. working out. Did you see that picture I sent you? Of him? Yeah. No, he's so Ira Proctor. Well, at one point, kind of owned a comedy club, right? Ran yeah. one out on the, on the Cape. Cape. And then another point in time. He I almost he, broke your hand last time I saw him. Uh, yeah. He, a Tasty Burger in Harvard Square. That's right. And then he dropped me off at an airport, uh, at Logan Airport, and I was so drunk I threw up in the- He the, drove you to the airport? Yeah. Him and, uh, After I was breaking your hand? I believe him. Sh- yeah. Him. Yeah. Cool. Because he just- he's You the do guy, have dainty hands, though. I'm not gonna, I feel like I have man hands, no, but that not like Ira no, Proctor woods of, the radio. woods of uh, <laughs> like woods of N- New Hampshire hands. No, he okay. I, he Canton, well, same town as Bill Burr is from. He wouldn't let me not get a ride with him to the airport if that makes any sense. Like he was yeah. he was like on the verge of crazy. Oh, he once jumped out of my car. I was giving him a ride somewhere. He jumped out. Yeah, he just tuck like, and roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just yelled at the ground. Yeah, yeah. But he was the funniest guy I ever met. He, uh, he's never been in part of a fantasy draft that he didn't storm out of. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he wanted he wanted too many Patriots. Yeah, I I, I forget what, but he's he took uh, offense at any kind of slight. I think he was just done, and he's like auto draft for me. No, I, I, that was not how it went. <laughs> or he was mad at people who wanted to auto draft. Yeah, he was. He, yeah, there's always those people that get he super was extreme the about. The first person to ever get he would get upset of if there was third place money. Yeah, upset about that, <laughs> which is true. That's commie nonsense. I do remember <laughs> it's commie nonsense. Make football or fantasy football drafts great again i uh i remember i threw him out at home during the boston comedy softball league oh yeah and then i was afraid to come out of the outfield because i threw him out from center <laughs> and i heard i just heard him go what like at, uh, at uh, whoever was, i think it was like uh I don't he, know. Was, he was definitely the pete rose of our league oh yeah and in, in, in a league full of pete roses he was the pete Ro- like that's like the there's nothing better of the lo- legendary boston characters than that softball league uh, a league full of people that would refuse to shake hands like oh one dude threw bought a bat struck out with it and threw it in the river <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be people like excavating boston yeah, yeah. looking for like, like revolutionary war stuff or murder weapons or something like yeah. this bat clearly was a murder weapon someone <laughs> killed along the charles on this trail and they thomas threw... jefferson's dildo well that's the funny oh it's the, the funniest no oh, you're fine dildo is fine dildo? uh <laughs> I, believe... don't 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 I think it depends sponsor. on the context of what said dildo is up to uh, yeah. Boston's one of those towns, though, when I uh, that you could get spots by just being be- more fun to hang out with than being funny. Yeah, like, yeah that's how I got on. Very much a hang <laughs> right? Like nobody, I, nobody trying to succeed. No, nah. <laughs> like Tom Dustin, who ran the like Sundays in softball. Like I hit a home run opposite field, and he was like, "You want a spot at the vault?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yes." <laughs> oh well, Tom was trying to stack his softball team too. Always. Yeah. Um, Tom Dustin is any so Tom Dustin still I see him touring now still too. Yeah, he's a very negligent mayor. Comedy of Boston Key West. Comedy. Have you been down to Key West to go uh, to Tom's show? Does he live in Key West for most of the year? Part time. That's good for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get that sunshine. It's really that's really ultimately. He's like sunshine. illiterate Hemingway. <laughs> Another iconoclast. An iconoclast. <laughs> <laughs> what is an iconoclast? Icon. Yeah, John was a doctor. Tell us it, what it is. It means you're. Uh, it's like plastic. You don't play so, by the rules. Oh. <laughs> okay. As, right. a, as a euphemistic way. You're of like saying rogue. It. <laughs> what does euphemistic mean? <laughs> Sorry. You gotta throw up. your PhD words uh, in our face the whole Sorry, show. Sorry, everyone. I'm you gotta educated. play by the rules. <laughs> you don't play by the rules. Russell Westbrook. I went to I went to a Celtics game this year, and uh, Westbrook. Th- we're going to tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. You are. I thought I was going to the Celtics with you. No, you're going with Patterson. Oh, that'll be fun. Right, whatever, Johnny. You're out uh, on that. Show. <laughs> hey, I'm doing. I, I do I comedy for a living. <laughs> oh man. So you're going to you're going, you're going to see the Celtics play at the what Lakers? Clipper, Lakers or Clippers? Clippers. Yeah, it's a better game to see it. Clippers this are a cheap ticket. Unless you want to see uh, other people shove LeBron over to play defense. Like, he's really not playing hard right now. LeBron. Why would no, he? No, he's done. Yeah, he's I mean. He's been playing for 16 he's, years. He's Wizards Michael Jordan now. Just... <laughs> but Michael Jordan was, if the number of minutes Jordan had played, he would have retired. Yeah. By the time LeBron was still playing. Yeah, well, I mean, he started at what, like 18? Yeah. Like that, oh, LeBron yeah. James is the, the person. And missed a year. What? Le- oh, Jordan? Jordan? He missed two. He missed no, two. no, no! For an ankle injury, he missed, for an ankle injury, and he also missed two because he had to go pretend he's playing minor league baseball because he had to dodge some gambling debts. Right? Yeah. Is, is that what, what you think happened? Uh, How could Michael Jordan have gambling debts? How bad at gambling was he? Uh, I, I've heard pretty bad. I mean, I mean, I know yeah. he likes it. Did he win ever? He wagered his father's <laughs> life on something. Jeez! <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know that story, his father was murdered. Um... Right yeah, on the side of a for road. gambling debts. Yeah. That's the rumor. That's the rumor. Well, I know the rumor also is that he the went. Dad had baseball. gambling debts. I think not they, Michael I, Jordan. Well, some. I think both. I mean, how how was he getting the money to make these big bets? Or or he was probably using Nike. I would use Michael as. No, I'm not talking about Michael Jordan. I'm talking about his dad. I would use my I, if my son was Michael Jordan, I'd use him as just Leverage. collateral. Yeah, yeah, of course. My son's Michael. Michael Jordan's my kid. Yeah, I'll put fifty five thousand. I just on think it. it was a couple of racist guys. I Wait, Oko oh, killed him? Yeah. Killed I him. bet there's a few racist gambling uh, bookies. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it's not. I, Why do we have to choose? It was in the no, South. I don't think a bookie would be racist because you're just betting on whoever you think is going to win. You don't see. You know, I suppose, you see I suppose green, like you couldn't be racist. Or Venmo. Uh, otherwise, you'd be a bad gambler at sports, especially bad in basketball. Sport. <laughs> oh, really, I think it really depends on. I thought Haywood was due. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really depends. Hayward I, I, had a game winner last night. Who did? Gordon Hayward. Yeah, I mean, Gordon's back. 
yeah. By yeah. the way, jo- Dan kind of looks like uh, Tiny Gordon Hayward. If I had to say that you look that like an NBA player, that is the nicest thing anyone's ever said. Right? To me. I mean, mm-hmm. you need a big makeover. <laughs> like you're, you're Gordon Hayward. That was left in in the now. It's weird. A goodwill. He started out insulting me. Now I'm with I, the recluse comment, great. and you saved me with iconoclast, and now you're the one calling me ugly. I don't know. I said you're st- un- unkempt. How I am f- unkempt. That's <laughs> fair. Yeah, but you make it look cool. Yeah. yeah. So there, I'll, I'll uh, uh, compliment again. <laughs> All right, coming up next, we're talking about how bad San Diego sucks at sports. Uh-huh. This is nearly informed with Brad and Brian. It's nearly informed. Brad out in with me today. John Osle and Dan Bulger, comedians. Jono's from San Diego, so he's uh, having a rough go with the whole football situation. He's all about the Padres. Dan's from Boston, so it's been a good decade. It's yeah. been a good decade of winning. Ugh. I mean, when I care about the Celtics. <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a Patriots fan? But, I mean, when the Patriots are in the Super Bowl, you care, though, clearly. Right? I won money on it this year. So you care about that. I, uh, in October, my, uh, my buddy made me a bet that they'd win the Super Bowl. And then I bet him double that, that our owner loves prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that mean, let's talk about that story in a minute, too. But let's get to, uh, I want to talk about Stormy Daniels. I want to talk about You know, Bob Robert Kraft. Kraft's uh, hand job lady is opening for Stormy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> the, she's got some that, credits now. She's out. She They let her out. They find, the, Well, that story is so ridiculous because they had that. <laughs> Stormy Daniels will full on have sex with you. <laughs> So she. Well, gets that's the what the show is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not just like that. Just the fluffer gets to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets the time up front. That story's so ridiculous because they let those poor ladies keep giving hand jobs to old men for like weeks and months and just building. Oh, right. But like usually when you have a yeah, yeah. a human trafficking sting operation, it's like me or uh, what is it? Uh, catch a predator where they get you all the way in there. They have the transaction begin to happen and then they come in and save the poor person right. from having to go through with the sexual deed at, at this joint they were just like whatever just yeah. let them now nah, we'll just we'll just build yeah, yeah. a robert a Kraft should have left with blue balls and being very unrelaxed <laughs> right in handcuffs yeah not allowed to and these poor ladies still had to go through with the whole thing i know um so i wanted to talk about the super bowl this year was interesting because well, but also you forget actually, we were uh, they were this, afc championship but we were on the road <laughs> yeah, I know. He took his private underdogs. He took, he took an Uber to a forty nine dollar hand job joint, and then got on a then yeah, got yeah. on a private plane. An organization success starts from the top, <laughs> and if your owner is tense, <laughs> then, then Tom Brady's going to be tense. And, and then if Tom Brady's going to be tense, the whole thing falls. And apart. it just shows that he's willing to budget and save in places that he has to and spend where Gross. he needs. to. he didn't. He wasn't on the road in Miami. He was on the road in Kansas City. He, he rerouted himself to Florida. <laughs> Well, yeah. you know he's got. Well, you don't want to get. You, know, uh, you, you don't want to go to a rub and tug in Kansas City. The yeah. winds there are Missouri? so cold. Dry hands. I just like, well, here's the thing. It is a dry rub. That's what they're known dry for rub. in Kansas City. <laughs> hey now. Uh, I don't think that's true. What the barbecue? The barbecue. barbecue. It's like a dry I don't rub. Think they're a dry rub city. No, yeah. they weren't thinking about that. All not the. No one's a dry rub in the other regard. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> unless you, unless hope. you've hit like unless you've hit rock bottom and that's it. Right. Um now I went to the Super Bowl this year and You did. And Oh uh, really? Yeah, well cuz the Rams made it and so right. in theory LA should have been super excited about the Rams <laughs> being there and it was the and it's Atlanta and my girlfriend's in Atlanta. I have a house in Atlanta from doing radio there so I was like, oh, what a perfect, what the perfect scenario. Mm-hmm. I can make it seem like I'm going out to support the Rams, and really I'm just going out there to like just have a good time in Atlanta. And it was the most depressing. Pr- I mean, the Patriots fans were overwhelming. And, sure, uh, as they're immediately. To be. <laughs> and in the South, it was it was just obno- it's funny because you had obnoxious people from the South mixed up with obnoxious people from the Northeast. It made for just a lot of fun at bars. Mm-hmm. But the funny, interesting part was that LA could not. Like they, there was no the city did not care at all that there was a team in the Super Bowl. No, and that's been like I only way it's worse is if it was the Chargers. Oh God, yeah. If there was, it, there was a chance it would have been the Chargers Rams Super Bowl. It would have been the saddest <laughs> Super Bowl. Like they, is it because it's just a Lakers Dodgers? It they, it's just not an NFL yeah. town, and specifically, even if you are an NFL NFL fan in Los Angeles, you hate the Chargers. Because you're either a Raiders fan, which they've been since the you know since they left in the '90s, or you're a Rams fan and that you don't care about the Chargers, like in like or you're in any any team, like you're a regional rival of the Chargers, and then everyone who like myself who's oh, from San Diego, got here. yeah, yeah, I, it would be I, like I moved if the, here. If Boston somehow got the Lakers, yeah, like it, it's the um, right. like like when I like they they. 
the Chargers, when they left, were like, oh, 25% of our fan base is in Los Angeles. And there were people like me who are from San Diego and now live in Los Angeles and now hate the Chargers. Yeah, right? So they, like, squander their entire fan base. It's it's actually pretty impressive because nobody goes to either game. Nobody cared. If the Rams would have won the Super Bowl, it would have been the most depressing parade you've ever seen. And it and – it is a thing where they went. The city of LA had been, and I think it's because it had been used as a leverage piece for so long. You know, just oh right, yeah, because like the everyone false threat would, of right, like, everyone would threaten. Well, we're going to LA. It's what Seattle's become now for the NBA, where right. now instead of the owners saying, "Hey, let's have an expansion team in Seattle," it's way more valuable for the yeah. Milwaukee Bucks to say, "Hey, guys, you don't improve this stadium." Seattle um, right. super needs a team. Oh, it'd be amazing. But yeah. now it's like, but now I feel like we've been messed with for so many, so many years in terms of the threats yeah. and the teams. And we if, had a, we had a Kevin bid in. Durant, if the team stayed in Seattle, Kevin Durant never would have left. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, well, one, it would have been we we would have market. Well, yeah. we we drafted Westbrook too. I I don't know about Harden. I'm not sure if we were it would have depended. We still still had the same uh, the same GMs and stuff. But it is so. San Diego is just the hatred for LA sports is just. Oh yeah, it's at a, it's at its peak. Well, it's for a sure. New York Boston thing. And now mm-hmm. finally, like we we can potentially compete in any sport now that we have Machado on the Padres. Like that's that like, doesn't matter in baseball. I mean, well, I know one guy just ends up. It just ends up just selling oh, jerseys. I'm not. I'm not, ca- I'm not planning <laughs> right. on World Series tickets this year. But Padres 2020. Padres in America 2020, that's what's happening. Padres, I've been saying it for Trump years. 2020. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> well, no, he wouldn't he wouldn't approve of Machado. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, that's not that's not that's probably not the guy he's wearing the jersey no. wearing. Did you hear that? I mean, this makes sense, but no everybody's a little bit afraid to tackle it on sports radio, but the uh that the uh, Phillies actually wanted, the Phillies management actually wanted to sign Machado instead of Bryce Harper. Uh, but they put a fan, a fan poll up, and it was resoundingly the fans of oh, Philadelphia. No. <laughs> <laughs> resoundingly, the fans want Bryce Harper instead of Manny Machado. Well, didn't Machado like not run out of playing in the World Series? Dan beeps a lot. I'm all beepy. Just, just turn it off. <laughs> was that a phone? Put on silence. I was giving it. I was giving Dan like the benefit of the doubt on the beeps because I know he has diabetes, and I didn't know if he had I'm some also, alarm I'm going also off. Also, a surgeon. Diabetes. <laughs> doing surgery. Uh, just, yeah, so the fans of, but I, I also think that I think that certain markets, yeah, man, Bryce Harper is going to play better. He play well, uh, better. Well, I don't know about Boston now. Well, yeah, I mean, Boston's had uh, such a good um, legacy of like Dominican and Latino players come up there and just crushing it. I mean, baseball, but like if you had a, a poll for the Patriots, like, hey, who should our wide receiver be? Is like it's a what white I guy. Think is nice well, about Dominican players, having watched Kyrie Irving for a while, is they don't talk. <laughs> you, you want well I, there's something to be said Kyrie Irving's awful when he talks I mean, he's just miserable but and so is Kevin Durant and all these guys but if they were Dominican or something just be like oh just throw it through a translate they, they just they, assume they're good natured they get I over. always do yeah. oh yeah well that's like Ichiro right no one really even knows what Ichiro's real opinions are because regardless crazy, of crazy whether fascist. He, well he wanted to uh, <laughs> he just always wanted a translator even he could speak perfect English like he can also hit home runs but in Seattle, they were like, why does he always have a translator? And like, because he just wants to just like say five words in Japanese to his translator and have his translator say it. And then also reporters can't, they can't really ask follow-up questions effectively. Uh, yeah. So he just gets out of press conferences immediately, even though everyone who talks to Ichiro just like behind the curtain, behind the scenes is like, mm-hmm. yo, dude, he ta- he speaks fine. Uh, yeah. And what just, a brilliant strategy. Yeah. It's in his contract. He of doesn't, course. I think it's genius. I, if I was playing a sport now, I'd just say, no, nah, like my first language is German. So I just. Kawhi Leonard <laughs> doesn't say anything to anybody. When he does, it's weird. Does he? Yeah, Ka- I've never heard him talk. Kawhi, when Kawhi Leonard says things, it's like his his voice doesn't match his body. It's kind of like like Evan Turner. Oh, right. It's just a weird. Like when he laughs, like <laughs> you ever hear <laughs> Evan Turner talk? I've not. He sounds like Beaker from Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that when the you best s- one was uh, Dikembe Mutombo. Oh yeah, he sounds like he's Cookie a, Monster. A cookie Monster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to sex Mutombo? <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing. Um, who do you think? So, um, in terms of what could the Chargers do at all to win back San Diego at all, John? Was there move they back? Would would that even? Would they be cool with it? Yes, I would be cool with it. Even if it was the Spanos family, I'd be upset for sure. But like the the two paths, the best path is for them to sell the team to a different owner and move back. If if they do either of those a things, though, 
if, if they sold to a different owner in Los Angeles, I'd be more inclined to mm-hmm. root for them. But I cannot root for the team that is owned by the ones that moved the team. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like like uh, the Clippers, like they're my they're my basketball team now. But only once they sold uh, and they made Donald Sterling, you know. I stopped sell, liking them. Then. Sell uh, <laughs> once <laughs> well, he said bad things about uh, Magic Johnson. Uh, well, as a I mean, what has he done? Yeah, yeah. John O. He just I, been, he just I love that Michael Mike, uh, Magic Johnson has been ruining the Lakers from within, <laughs> and the Clippers have been built up by Jerry West. It's great. It's a good. It's a win-win. Uh, I got a bobblehead of Jerry West now. I mean, I just. What I, is Magic Johnson? How has he made money? Uh, he owns a ton of movie theaters. He renovated a, a bunch of uh, Inglewood and Los Angeles, and owns a piece of the Dodgers. Oh yeah, and that they had a huge. Um, so real estate. Real estate businesses because he was professional a really sports. bad talk show host. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do that well. Yeah, and then he yeah, I think he's a behind the camera kind of guy. I think I think behind he's a the figurehead, scenes. and he's a really bad general manager. <laughs> uh, well, right now LeBron's GMing and coaching and doing all of it. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, coming yeah. up next, let's talk about Stormy Daniels. Find Nearly Informed on Instagram and Twitter at Nearly Informed. Nearly. Yeah, sorry, I'm all beepy. It's all right, dude. You can be beepy. You can do. Phones have silencers. John O is currently showing Dan Bolger how to silence his phone. Yeah. Uh, your phone's off, but like, yeah, this little switch, you flip it down. Because I've been, tr- I've been hitting this. So thing, for anybody button. listening, oh, yeah. John, Dan, John O just showed Dan how to use an iPhone. But Dan, John, Dan's got like an older iPhone, so I, I get it now. Like I have Ryan, the one you now. You were the one that talked me into an iPhone years ago. Dan, Dan's because uh, I, I was a BlackBerry guy forever. I had a flip phone up until five years ago. I feel like you'd yeah. be more comfortable with the flip phone still. Oh, definitely. It's like the mystery. You can of lose Dan it, and you just buy one twenty bucks. You're you're happy. Just get one at Seven Eleven. You just buy a that's, burner. That's why you're an iconoclast, Dan. Is you you had more flip phones than anyone in history. <laughs> <laughs> it's a re- it's also a recluse thing to do. Yeah, flip phone. Well, it's, in a, it's, a, it's a thing to throw against the wall as well, and you can you can. And you mad about something? Yeah, Who cares? Yeah, yeah. just put it back oh, together. That was a bit. Yeah, yeah. Just snap Very it back well. together. Oh, that was you should just you chuck just your chuck phone, phone for no reason. In in Bridgetown, I threw it into a barrel from forty feet away, <laughs> and claimed to be a little Marcus Aldridge. <laughs> that's pretty. It's a pretty pretty solid pretty it's solid. A good bit. It plays everywhere. <laughs> Everybody laughs at broken phones. Any any mid two thousands Blazers reference? I I go Clyde the Glide. I go even. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a Kevin 90s. Duckworth guy. Duckworth. Um. So if you haven't heard the story of, uh, well, everyone knows Stormy Daniels at this point. She's the one who, you know, claims Trump says he didn't, but that they that her and Trump the porn she's a porn star that they did it. She wrote about it in her book. Uh, then Cohen paid her to keep it quiet. Apparently that was Trump's money. Whatever, blah blah blah. What else is in her book? Uh, I don't. I mean, you know what though? I'd rather hear her her story. Well, let's get into the whole point of this. Yeah. So, kind of a little bit of a hubbub, I'd say, a kerfuffle of sorts happened on the internet on Twitter. It's not that big of a deal. It just made to me. It just brought up a funnier issue <clears> with uh, Stormy Daniels' book to play the comic strip in Houston on a Wednesday, and uh, she the club tweeted it. Then comedian Lori Kilmartin retweeted saying like, hey, just because, I don't know, you did something doesn't mean, <laughs> is John, are your phone on too? I, here's the thing. I, <laughs> I showed him how the, the switch worked and he left forgot to switch on. That's hilarious. So anyways, she knows no bounds. Oh, boy. She basically said, leave the weekends for professional female comedians. Yeah, but she right. worked a Wednesday, right? Right. She it's said specifically Wednesday. like stand-up is not a reward for being famous because many people, when they're like... The re- other careers have run right. dry. Go into stand up to cash in on their fame. Well, do you think of it? I don't even think of yeah. what she's doing. It's as like we stand-up. catch their careers going right. down, right. As I've plateaued. Yes, <laughs> it's like, n- it's not like stand up though. It's more just like it's a like a public appearance where she's just going to do whatever yeah. she's going to do. It's a we'll, we'll function see. room. Yeah. yeah, that's what a co- I, I think we, the people get too like adamant about. Wow, well, the, the comedy club. It's supposed to be sacred, booked comedians only. But then yeah, yeah. a lot of the comics are weighing in. I'm like, well, one, you came off some like a like a weird MTV show that got you a bunch of followers. Sure. And yeah, I, you put in ten years now. But originally, people were saying the I've same stuff. I've opened for about R-rated you. hypnotists. Yeah. I've opened for bad. Those magicians. are my favorite shows to do. <laughs> I opened for <laughs> Freddie Stone in Boston. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh or, man. No, it was Worcester, Worcester, right. Massachusetts. My, you know. 
Yeah, Freddie Stone was great. But that's the thing. It's like I don't understand why everybody forgets that it is like what Dan just said. It's it like sucks. a function room. It is, but it's people. If their people are going to pay to come see you, yeah, they're yeah. going to buy drinks. Then why should the comedy club? And they club? don't want to go yeah. to the Radisson to see her or wherever the hell else you can have a. <laughs> well, function. she's not going to be in clubs for long. She's going to make the jump to theaters right, faster yeah, yeah, than yeah. anyone else. That's does. the thing. Is like the like we were talking about earlier. Like the the guy who shot Jesse James, Robert Ford, took his act on the road and was a like super popular touring act in like the eighteen yeah, nineties or whatever. Jesus. So cashing in on your fame, <laughs> like headliner. technically yeah. predates. He made that stand-up. speech outdoors too, and people dug it. <laughs> he was a festival act. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's like, of course everyone's going to cash in on their fame. It does suck that, like, if they conflict with existing stand-up things, but, like, Stormy was doing it on a Wednesday, so, like, whatever, there's semantic argument about exactly what she's taking I mean, away from. No, but, she's adding to. Yeah, she's add- Theoretically, well, one, she's that's the thing. she's keeping the club open. Right, yeah. yeah so, like, if, if Motley's she- one time had a guy named the Human Floor <laughs> that... Just <laughs> women in heels would walk across. No way. This oh, was that was like on a Saturday night at a comedy. That was like Tom's late night thing, yeah. right? They'd throw darts at him. Human and he would just throw stick darts at him. At him. Yeah. And he didn't care? Yeah. No, his, his skin was made of the floor somehow. Jeez. They, they would have let us pee on him, but they thought it would improve the smell. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's uh, got to be some health code violation about peeing on somebody on a stage. I just thought it was interesting because, you know, every I feel like comics forget real quick the ones that I mean, how long do you have to put in time for? So if Stormy does the next five years of of doing workshopping, whatever she does at a comedy club, and it's funny. Then all of a sudden we'll accept her because Steve O for a long time would just go and set his and staple oh, all his the rest, balls. To his all leg. the wrestlers would. Do yeah, it. I mean, I opened for Steve O. I actually loved his act. I, like, here's the thing: he kept it the wasn't, staples. It wasn't like that much of a stand-up <laughs> act, but it was like an <laughs> entertaining signed. thing at a comedy right. club. So like it, but he did like uh, same thing. The probably Stormy would do is like no, it's a one Jack person Ass show. Jackass is funny though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jack that's. Ass is I mean, funny. like at some point it's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> oh, have you seen those ones where it's like two women wrestling? No. <laughs> Talking to the microphone. <laughs> Dan, Dan. I like Dan's a very oh, alt radio uh, talent. Or you're just like, you know, I'm just going to, my phone's going to be, I'm just going to start talking over here. I'll be back eventually. I don't do it very often. <laughs> Can't imagine why. <laughs> He's unpredictable. He's a recluse. I kind of what he wants. No rules. The iconoclast um, radio hour. But honestly, I'd rather hear Stormy Daniels attempt whatever the hell whatever. she does. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then then a lot of these uh, beat up road acts who've been doing the same thing for 40 years. Well, well anybody yeah. that gets anybody to go into a comedy club on a Wednesday. Right. That's that's the difference though. It's like you shouldn't be like necessarily taking away weekends to and like and then bomb your ass off if you're headlining. The the compromise that Lori suggested on Twitter, which I thought was good and I like is like she should just host a show with other female comedians. That way she wouldn't have to fill an hour no, with nothing. That, but see, now that's Lori being self-serving. No. No, it is. It's because here's the thing that's going to happen. is that Stormy's going to blow up, and she's going to be a funny, entertaining host. And then, like, Lori is like, and listen, dude, I'm only saying this because I'm someone who would pitch the same thing to Stormy Daniels. Hey, host your own thing, and then maybe you can get it on Netflix, and you can be a funny host and bring up yeah. other funny people to come up and get a TV credit. That seems like a win-win. Yeah, I yeah. know it's just self-serving. When you know, just let the lady. D- She's if doing she, the no, moth, though, no, right? Because like it's it's hilarious. Because like she, <laughs> Stormy's. Have you seen Stormy's moth? Oh, I bet it's. it's I want to hear her stories when man. she had sex with. I want to hear her stories too, but as long as it's not like bumping a comedian from doing a weekend, like if You're she's not, because she can fill up that room honest. Because she is a draw, yeah. so like like let the draw come on like a Tuesday, Wednesday. Sure. Like that, that that win-win. Like Doug Doug no, uh, people, Benson does his podcast at four twenty on a Tuesday night. Yeah. Are not going to be like I'll tell you. I people work. Yeah, yeah. But nobody they, but, on a Tuesday is like oh, I'm going to go but, see a a, spo- a porn star make a speech. Well, of course they will because Maybe. that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> well, she's going to do it on a Wednesday, but also. But, but a Tuesday, Wednesday, like I don't even. But think the club it's bad to book her on a weekend. Here's the thing: the club isn't going to the club is going to sell it out on a Wednesday, right? Sure. And then of course they're going to move her to a weekend because they're they're gonna, they want to make money. Booze. They want to do four if shows. They'll move it to and a they mostly want to sell booze. Yeah, they sure. want to, of course, that's where the profit's at. I don't, but what obligation does does a comedy venue have? Does the comic strip have to only book comedians it, that we comedians approve in terms of like, well, they've done it long enough, they can go on stage because a lot of clubs book, there's two they got to keep the doors open. There's well, two kinds of comedy clubs, though. There's smaller rooms that create like a culture, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. where you can go any weekend, might not be a famous person, every now and then it will be. But you know you're going to see a certain type of act, like kind of an alty, whatever. 
And then there's just places that book whoever. Right. I mean, we'll the, draw tickets. The, right. the improv on Fridays at prime time does podcasts. Yeah. Live podcasts right. sell out comedy clubs all the time. Does that sell a lot of booze? I can't imagine. Well, that so where's the? But, so my my, I Plus. guess I guess my my contention with it is where's the uproar when um when some non stand up community? What's the dude who from Mallrats? Kevin Smith. Yeah. When Kevin Smith does his podcast yeah. at the Improv and bumps a night that could be a night with like a sh- either a showcase or some comedian in Los Angeles headlining. Where's the uproar when he just does Kevin, his live podcast Smith, because though, he draws? Is famous for comedy. I mean, I uh, well for being funny. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I, like upper, not stand up. He's not famous for stand up. I'd be talking about it all the time if I only had some stage time on a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so pissed. I'd be, yeah. I'd be tweeting. That, that's yeah. different than Stormy Daniels. I think, I think it uh, is maybe, just, but we don't know anything about Stormy Daniels. It, I don't know if she's funny or not. I don't know if she's got a bunch of funny stories about weird sex and stuff. That's you she's funny on Twitter. I'm right? sure she's, she's clever. A, she's a, yeah, like she seems to have a good wit about her. But like, I wouldn't want to see her do an hour of like stand up. But it's not going to be stand up. I don't I know, assume. man. I kind of do. You have to have some level of self deprecating sense of humor to be in the porn business. She's He's just going to tell stories, I'm sure. Self-defecating. <laughs> Defecating and deprecating. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, been a lot of both. <laughs> click on certain links for that one. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, don't, you wouldn't, like, you wouldn't just, <laughs> out of sheer entertainment value, be, like, who would you rather go see? Some comic that you've seen out here a thousand times? Or would you rather go see a porn star who's trying to be funny? Well, if I so, see him uh, my yeah, thousandth time, also, I get the free yeah, nachos. Not you, just a guy. <laughs> just a general. I just mean, it, that's the thing. Like, I would want to see, like, I would love to see the Stormy Daniels one just on that specialty show rather than a full-on weekend. Like, there, there, there is a compromise that can be made, and Man. you guys aren't seeing it. I gotta go to what? I, the compromise. <laughs> to you go see the, the official <laughs> porn star of the Democratic Party. All right, yeah. all right, we're gonna come right back and talk about the compromise John was trying to show us. This is Nearly Informed with Brad so the and Brian. Is what you're saying, they're doing anyway. Yeah. See, yeah, Dan's so rogue, he just talks over the imaging. What is that? <laughs> he just wants to have us. Oh. <laughs> it's, when that, it's when the voice guy comes here. I'll play it again. Watch. This is Nearly Informed with Brad and Brian. You that guy that's like not in the room who's talking? Oh, okay. I thought you were playing some tunes. <laughs> <laughs> These original beats. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of radio etiquette that uh, you have not been no, acquainted I like, with. No, D- Dan, I like it because Dan, Dan could be that. Dan would, if you had Dan on a radio show full time, yeah. people would listen just to see if Dan's going to keep talking <laughs> once Imagine Dragons starts playing. Could, could I? I hate. Oh man. Imagine <laughs> well, that's the thing. Dan wouldn't know the mic's on, and in the middle of Imagine Dragons, Dan would be like. Wait a minute. So what's that? What are you? <laughs> is it something about like all rock stations? Like they just never update the playlist. Well, the problem with rock is that the play- there's not artists updating the playlist. Like yeah, there's there no are. One, there's not a, there's not a whole lot of people coming up with new like alternative music. This is untrue. It's just never who played. who name them. My Morning Jacket put out like six good albums before my, anybody who the hell heard. Is my of Morning them? Jackets. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I work in Top Forty where yeah, we yeah. have new. We play the same ten songs over and over again for two weeks and then we get 10 new songs and we play them mm-hmm. relentlessly for two weeks but that the thing I, the critique I've heard about alternative radio they which, still play like Bush yeah Nirvana Bush Stone Temple Pilots yeah, yeah. like how is it alternative these are the only songs I've ever heard yeah <laughs> every once in a while they'll slip in like a new fallout boy and people be like no <laughs> No, I want Nirvana well, then back. I almost feel like they on purpose be like, yeah, here's Fallout Boy. Yeah, like, this is what know, happens. Who you know suck. When you and ask then, for new music. I um, just want a Papa Roach only station. Yeah. I saw Papa Roach live. What? Where? That's Cut not, my that's, life into yeah. pieces. I saw them open for uh, Guns N' Roses in Worcester. Wow. That show. <laughs> it was the worst. <laughs> my, it was literally the worst show wow. I've ever seen. <laughs> Worcester, Massachusetts. It was by far the worst show oh, I've ever wow. seen. And then the other <laughs> the other act was uh, Sebastian Bach from Skid Row. Wow. I saw Sebastian Bach at a pool in Vegas. And this is when I realized the difference between boy band fame. Like Lance Bass was in the pool too. It was Lance Bass on one end and Sebastian Bach. Well, once, this is before Lance Bass had come out as gay, so this also may make more sense as to why women weren't flocking to Lance Bass at the pool in Vegas. Sure. But Sebastian Bach, like, this is like seven years ago. So he's like an old, he's got an old rock body yeah. where it's, he's he's skinny, but it's all just he's tall. Dope. Very tall. It's yeah. just all Great dope. voice. Skin of leather. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like kind of, it's just barely hanging on there. He's and the he human had, floor now. He only had a couple <laughs> hits. He had a... Uh, but he had uh, the number one album in the country. It was a really good album, Slave to the Grind. But the only hits are really poppy ballads. Mm-hmm. And he had one of the songs, 
all his songs were like written by like a 20 year old and when i saw him he was like 45 it was like right after iraq and he was like clearly into it we found dan's wheelhouse in music by the way <laughs> oh, we <laughs> just nailed it sebastian boxer i've never met the someone in my cuts. life who knows yeah. anybody about sebastian yeah, but his, his his best banter moment he went uh yeah, what's up with this war? Have there been enough dead people in the news lately? This one's <laughs> called monkey business. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather hear that Those than- Those are the kind of stories you want to hear on Top 40 Radio. <laughs> <laughs> what's up with this war, man? Remember that band from 91? Mm. <laughs> well, that, that banter's better than when John Mayer attempts banter, man. That guy, when John Mayer, he'll just, you can just, when he starts talking, you just don't want him to, like he has the guitar in his hands. He does stand up. It, that's the thing. Kinda. Speaking of stand up skit air. Well, yeah, would, okay, would everybody be all pissed if he said he was going to headline on a Wednesday night? No. They No, because we just, people hate her because she's a porn star. That's the part I, that annoys I me about the Stormy Daniels thing. I mean, certainly Lori doesn't. Like, that's not her, her issue with her. Ron Jeremy S- does comedy clubs. Probably, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, that's the thing. Like, think of Screech. Screech got into porn I've, before I've he got into stand up. I've never masturbated to Ron Jeremy. <laughs> How about Stormy? I've never have. <laughs> I'm more of an alt porn star guy, <laughs> Sebastian Bach genre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm more like a Scott Weiland. Well, uh, well, who was it? Wait, who who did you just mention before? Oh, Screech. Yeah, Screech. That's did, right. Screech was a famous guy who got into porn and stand up, and it's just like it. It it's like stepping down the ladder. So do you think it's like both? Michael do you think, Jordan played baseball. Do you, <laughs> do you think that both genres hate him? Like the oh. porn industry's like, oh, so Screech, Screech thinks he can come over here with of fan course. base. Screech is crazy though. Yeah, Screech oh, is like bipolar. He's right? nuts. I wonder if Stormy Daniels. Well, he should have just bought a clean act. He should have bought some guy's act. Right. Oh, and just been and a just goofball. Done yeah. Colleges and been a goofball. Yeah, for life. Oh, he could have made millions doing colleges. Yeah, yeah. But instead, he, he stabbed someone in Wisconsin. Didn't he go to jail? <laughs> yeah, for a little bit? yeah. Uh, he, uh, he, we, the only my only experience with him ever. I was supposed to open for him in Seattle like eight, nine years ago or something. No way. And, uh yeah, and it was we like it was weird. The club owner was like, "Yo, he sold these out, but I know he can be a little bit crazy." So, um, you're in town. Do you want to open? I'm like, sure. My buddy went to pick him up for radio because that was like the trade off. If you wanted to host, you had to drive the person to radio in the morning, right? Oh, gross. So he goes to pick him up. I would um, quit comedy. He goes to drop him off at the hotel, and he uh, like Screech is going to check in. And they want a credit card for incidentals. And he starts, he freaks out. He has like a meltdown at the hotel desk. And he's like, I've been here before. You people always. And he's like pointing at this Asian woman. Mm. And the manager comes up and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, listen, dude, you don't, we just run, authorize the card. And then if you drink all the drinks and eat all the snacks, we just, you know how it works. And the guy's like, no, 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 not not what she was going to do with it. And then he starts basically pointing at this Asian lady saying like this Asian lady was going to sell my, his credit card information. Like he's losing his mind in the lobby. And so then the hotel owner is like, listen, you're, you're clearly insulting my front desk employee, I can't have you doing that. You're just literally screaming at her like she's going to steal your info because she's Asian. And he's like, it's happened to me every single time one of them checks me oh, in. Oh, no. And he's getting all crazy. And <laughs> That would be horrible because there's so many Asians. Oh, and, yeah, Seattle. If they're just, all against you? Oh. oh. He's so he then he <laughs> he's just canceled his Japanese and tour. Just rolls out a grenade. Like a million people. Um, I hate so, Screech. No, then he, uh, like, my buddy Mike leaves, right? Mike leaves and he's like, uh, Screech is like, I'll text you. I'm going to a new hotel. I'll text you the address tomorrow. Mike's like, okay, man, I can take you to a new hotel. He's like, I don't want any. No, I'll do it myself. Screech then gets in a cab, goes back to the airport, buys a ticket, flies home. Doesn't wow. tell anybody. Tells nobody. So then Mike comes back to the hotel they dropped him off at and was like, hey, did he ever tell you where he was going after this? And they're like, no. So Mike's sitting at the hotel. Then Mike thinks like, okay, maybe he Ubered or, uh, or at that point you had to take a cab. Took a cab down to the first radio station by himself, and I'll go there and take him to the next two because he had like a little run. Sure. He goes to that radio station. They're like, "Yo, we have him slated for you know six fifty or six fifty five. We haven't seen him, ever heard from him." So then Mike goes there. Then Mike thinks he's confused. So then Mike's like trying to track him down. He's calling the club owner. Um, then so then I end up headlining the weekend hey. because no one. Should, yeah, move my way in because it's variety. I couldn't handle it. And then. Uh, I, like his agent called on Sunday and was like, he like said that the club was being trying to steal from him oh, and all hilarious. sorts of stuff. I think maybe that we should get more celebrities doing stand up so when they bone out, we can headline right. the real with the film host, headliners. That host thing is the thing people have done. Well, um, she stormy hosts it. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah, that, that's do. that's the compromise. But that's people the thing. going to see her aren't going to see comedy. Well, maybe I mean, it's a pet. I think they're going to see <clears throat> her be funny and talk about sex and all the people that she's banged. Right. 
because she seems like an like of the more interesting porn stars I can think of, and I'd want to hear her stories the same way I wanted to hear Steve-O's stories where right. I opened for him. Did like, he tell yeah. stories just staple his balls? He, got, like, he Terry did Gross. both. He had he had range that Steve-O. He had he told stories with his body and his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he must have got a little better at it. Yeah, he's uh, a I good performer. Good. Now, but here's the other thing too: is like I think this backlash is late though. Is my, my initial oh, point sure. is because like. So I remember when Theo Vaughn was on Road Rules and whatever, mm-hmm. and he started headlining. Uh, clubs would n- r- notoriously have to book people to open for him that were headliners and be like, hey, just do 30 or 35, 40 or whatever, and he'll do 20 because mm-hmm. he could draw, but he couldn't like fill the time at all. Now, at this point in time, it's not the case at all. Like Theo tours on his own is a, sure. is a beast, but at the time – People have been doing this forever. It's just, oh, I don't yeah. know why. I used to, when, like, I, uh, it really looked like my career was going to work out for a bit. <laughs> sure. Is it not now? <laughs> no. You know how, like, in, like, it was, I, it's almost spots. like hoops. I was a pretty good basketball player until I was, like, you know, seventh grade, and then everybody grew. Here yeah. it comes. And then as soon as Twitter came out and stuff, I was just like, ah, I'm not going to do any of that. <laughs> Dan's like, I don't think this social media stuff's going to stick around. It's a fad. <laughs> yeah. But, so, I forget my point. Well, my point is that like stand up <laughs> comedy is like always going to be the lowest rung. Like that's the thing, is like yeah, uh, like it was Screech was T V, mm-hmm. then he was porn, and then he was stand up. So it's like clearly establishing us at the bottom. Like it's so bad at the bottom like remember when like uh Louis C. K got all the stuff came out about him, he had to like quit stand up and then like hey, Jeremy crazy Pippen. Idea. What if Louis C. K. opened for Stormy Daniels? I, mean, it could, I think at this point it couldn't she, make him any less hateable in right. terms of the mainstream like media. They could do a good act out together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so then Jeremy Piven, <laughs> when he got outed, he got demoted to stand up. Like he lost all of his acting jobs, and he was like, "Well, I guess I can just go into stand up now because like that's just below." People still want to see me, and I can sell merch. Yeah, like after he's the just show. He cashing in. Is it me too? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you like you like you like this, Brian? So I've been doing this line in my act about me too, where it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, classic Let's end me the, too. I want to end the show on this, Dan. What so, is it? <laughs> last night I did a set in Venice. And I just went on. I'd be like, "Oh, it could be anybody." Like, you guys see this afternoon, Alex Trebek. And I go, "Like, oh, I'm just messing with you." But I didn't watch the news all day, <laughs> so I had no idea Alex Trebek had stage four terminal cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so I go on, and they were like, "They were like, oh, that's edgy." Like the crowd was like, "Oh," and I'm like, "Oh, what? They never did that before." <laughs> that's right. Other times, other times when I've outed Alex Trebek falsely, and then I went home and I watched falsely. the news, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, that explains you know what, Dan? it, Dan." Sometimes when you're being an iconoclast, you don't even know how (laughs) funny you're actually being. This is Nearly Informed. If you like this show, find it on the Radio.com app and subscribe. Don't miss the anniversary sale at Safeway going on now. Great low prices on the things your whole family will love. Look for qualifying tags in store to soak up all the savings at Safeway. These savings are definitely worth celebrating. So head in store and shop the anniversary sale today. Now with the 7-Eleven app, use that dollar in your pocket on any size hot beverage, including coffee and lattes, with dairy and non-dairy creamers. Coffee your way for just $1 with your 7-Eleven app. Plus tax where applicable, only at participating 7-Eleven locations.